Mom. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Call for your mama. Who? Him. I'll be Look, man, I don't know you. And if I have one second of doubt who side you're on, I'm here. Stand by your seat. Ready. I get up, I open the door, there's a red dot pointed at my face from a nine millimeter. And they say, put up your hands. We do word association. I'm yelling in Tyree's face. I'm doing words, word play. We're doing this back and forth. And then uh, I remember uh, Ving Rhames was there. So, he, you know, obviously we were going back and forth. And every time I say something, I'm like, what? And he said, boy, if you don't sh And I remember I grabbed him. And we fell on the bed and we was wrestling this shit. I was like, yeah. And I jumped off him. I'm like, punk, you da 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 right, right? He slapped my hands, picked me up, slams me on the floor. Ever wonder what happened to that guy from Pulp Fiction? You hear me talking, hillbilly boy? I'm gonna get medieval on your ass. The one with the deep, menacing voice who could strike fear into the hearts of even the toughest criminals? Hollywood's tough guy himself, Ving Rain? This guy who could intimidate a shark with just a look. Ving Rhames is the one guy who's been a staple of the Mission Impossible franchise for what feels like forever. Well, get ready for a wild ride because his life has been anything but boring lately. We're talking name changes, police visits, and a mysterious absence from one of the biggest Mission Impossible movies ever. It involves hacking a Russian satellite. I can't authorize that. Which is why I didn't ask permission. Let's dive right in, shall we? Born Irving Ramsey's Reigns on May 12, 1959, in the bustling streets of New York City, let's take a second to talk about that name glow up. Irving to Ving? Uh, actually, it was something I was trying to keep a secret for a while, but somehow the press found out. My given name is Irving. And what happened was people started calling me for short Ving. So it kind of stuck with me even before I knew anything um, in reference to me wanting to be an actor. Um, so why my mother gave me a sweet Jewish name like Irving, I don't know. <laughs> we ain't mad at that. Ving grew up in a family that was all about education and the arts. A family of intellectuals in New York City. And guess what? He went to high school for performing arts. Can you imagine? He even studied drama at Juilliard. After performing arts high school, I auditioned for the Juilliard School. And this is when I was very interested in acting. I got accepted and um, did four years there um, on scholarship. And it really is a classical training, which really kind of gave me a strong foundation to be versatile as an actor. That's like Harvard for actors. Ving was surrounded by a bunch of other wannabe thespians who knew he'd be the one to make it big. Well, actually, my, um, my eighth grade teacher, when we did poetry readings in class, she would call on me. And she said, you know what? You have a kind of talent for this and you have an interesting voice. Why don't you just audition for the school? Uh, yes, in the graduating class, which was about 20 people, um, I graduated with Kevin Spacey, who just won an Oscar, uh, and Kelly McGillis. Those were probably two most known people. But then the alums from Juilliard. Are oh, Kevin it. Klein, Robin Williams, Mandy Patinkin, I mean, it's, yeah. By the time the 90s rolled around, Rame's career really took off. And let me tell you, he's been on a roll ever since. With his rugged charm and intense performances, Rames was the talk of the town in Hollywood. He absolutely nailed his roles in movies like Pulp Fiction, Con Air, and Mission Impossible. Nathan Jones, AKA Diamond Dog, former general of the Black Gorillas, Proving he could be the tough guy, the action hero, and even the suave spy. And let's not forget that brooding gaze. Depending on what side you're on, it could melt your heart or freeze you in your tracks. He's got that kind of talent that can make even the most boring movie interesting. He's won a Golden Globe for his performance in a TV movie about boxing promoter Don King. Do the name Muhammad Ali mean anything to you? Jesse. Muhammad's a good friend of mine. He's agreed to go a few rounds to help save the hospital. And in one of the most admirable moments in award history, Bing actually gave his Golden Globe Award away to another actor, Jack Lemmon. It was like a real life plot twist out of one of his movies. Apparently, Bing felt like Jack deserved the award more. I mean, talk about a classy move. 
I feel that being an artist is about giving, and I'd like to give this to you, Mr. Jack Lemmon. The Hollywood Foreign Press Association was so impressed with him that they made him another one. Now that's what I call a true gentleman. And his voice, forget about it. So if you think you're going to lean on me like these punks you got in here, you better think again. It's like listening to a deep, dark forest. Bing's powerful voice and that commanding presence he brings to every role total game changer. No wonder he's such a sought after talent in Hollywood. He's been popping up on TV shows like a bad penny, reminding us all that he's got range that's wider than the Atlantic Ocean. And get this, he's even done voice work for animation. You left the stove on while you were out. Chloe! Just a simmer. Can you imagine hearing that deep gravelly voice coming out of a cartoon character? We're getting off the subject. Let's talk about you. Are you happy? It's like hearing a lion roar in a teacup. I am the one they call when things go wrong. Bing is so committed to his roles, and he bodies those characters like it's a second skin. Bing delivered a powerful performance in the film Baby Boy. Okay. Deal with him before Don't I kill him! Don't Don't kill him. Deal with him before I kill him! Where he portrayed Melvin, a former convict and boyfriend of Jody's mother. Tyrese Gibson played Jody, the film's protagonist. He's a guy who's, as we say in the States, an ex-OG. OG means original gangster. And he is really trying to reform his life. And he's trying to set an example for Tyrese's character named Jody about these are some of the pitfalls that can happen to you. And he really doesn't want the kid to make the mistakes that he's made in life. The tension between Jody and Melvin reaches a boiling point, and it gets juicy right here. Mom. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Call for your mama. Word on the street is that Bing got so into character, it triggered Tyrese so bad, leaving him with a bitter taste in his mouth. Bing Rames definitely triggered the I don't like to to this day. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, bro. I don't give a where we at, give a what clothes we got on, what we doing, what event. It could be the Golden Globes. I see that across the room. I'll be like, man, f that right there. And honestly, who can blame Tyrese? I mean, how do you put a dude in a chokehold so tight he's calling for his mama and then ask, You want something from the store? That's gotta leave a mark, and I don't mean the chokehold. Fellow Baby Boy cast member Omar Gooding also tells a similar story about Bing's intensity. Apparently, Bing Rames isn't just a tough guy on screen. He's a real-life bruiser, too. Rumor has it that he and Omar Gooding got into multiple physical altercations during rehearsals for Baby Boy. Through the rehearsal process, he motivates you. I think for the, I, I was kind of cocky that I got it, so I felt like I was the but I wasn't showing it yet. And he called me out in front of everybody. Like, all right, that was a good rehearsal today. And he looks dead at me and says, but some of us need to step it up. Hmm. All right, I'll see y'all tomorrow. I was just like, what the f So I remember I go home and I'm thinking about it. Obviously, I can't sleep, can't wait for the next day, man. So I show up that day and I was fired up, man. He said, all right, first exercise we're going to do, uh, one of you is going to sit in the middle with a chair. The rest of the cast, all in character, are going to ask you questions. But just remember, stay in character, stay in character, stay in character. Who wants to go first? Me. <laughs> I'm ready. And I've sat there and I remember everybody that asked me anything, I just jumped on them. I wouldn't let them complete a sentence. I was just fired up. Bum, bum, bum. What? Yeah. Oh, because of this, because of that. If it wasn't in the script, I'd make it up. I was just vamping. I was like, well, remember last week when I, you loaned me that money? Hey, meet me last week. Like, Tarazi, you lying, my lying what? Like, I was just going off, right? Then we was like, all right, we're going to try something else. How about this scene is this? We'll do word association. I'm yelling in Tyree's face and doing words, word play. We're doing this back and forth. And then uh, I remember, uh, Ving Rhames was there. So he, you know, obviously we were going back and forth. And every time I say something, I'm like, what? He said, boy, if you don't shit. And I remember I grabbed him. And we fell on the bed and we was wrestling this shit. I was like, yeah. And I jumped off him. I'm like, punk, you don't da, 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 right, right? And, and that kept going. I mean, this rehearsal went forever, man. Apparently, Ving's got the strength that could rival a grizzly bear. And Omar learned the hard way. Bing is so committed to his craft, it has become a staple in movies like Mission Impossible, playing the role of IMF spy Luther Stickle. Bing is the only person in Mission Impossible lore other than Tom, who's been in it since the beginning. He's a real veteran. Bing's character is basically the voice of reason in the franchise. He's like the audience's surrogate, trying to make sense of all the crazy stuff that's going on. 
And let's face it, we all need someone to keep us grounded while Tom Cruise is running, jumping off buildings, and fighting bad guys. Bing's character is not just all brawn, he's also the brain. Facial recognition of the sketch. For me, immortals, no. For me, I could have done this at home. And he's in every single installment of the Mission Impossible franchise, except for one, the fourth installment of Mission Impossible, Ghost Protocol. Released in 2011, the rumor mill went into overdrive when the shooting of the movie started and Bing Grimes was nowhere in sight. Well, word on the street is that budget cuts forced the producers to reconsider his role. Can you imagine? And Ethan Hunt could have dearly paid for his absence. Now? Yes, right. Are you sure? Yes, I'm... I was left, turn left. Because Luther Stickle does not make those rookie mistakes. In an interview with Movie Web in 2010, Bing spills the tea about what really went down. He says, I may be doing something very small in Mission Impossible, Ghost Protocol, but I will just say that the budget changed dramatically, and I'll leave it at that. Thankfully, after some back and forth, Rames ended up making a brief cameo, but only after negotiating a sweet, sweet deal. He got $7.7 million and appeared in a scene that lasted just 39 seconds. Hey, this must be them. Luther Stickle, the firm of Carter, Dunn, and Brent. You heard that quite right. A whopping $7.7 million for just two days of work in Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. That's like winning the lottery. Apparently, he's the highest paid actor for the smallest amount of screen time. I mean, mind blown. Bing is out here securing the bag, honey, and he's got the keys to show for it. A double mansion estate in LA and a house in Santa Monica, and that's where things get pretty dangerous. In July 2016, Rames was in his house wearing only basketball shorts when he heard a knock at the door. Actor Ving Rames is in the news tonight, and it's not only his role in this weekend's blockbuster Mission Impossible movie that has people talking. Rames just went public about a confrontational moment with police in his own home. I opened the door. There's a red dot pointed at my face from a 9 millimeter. Oh, my gosh. And they say, put up your hands. A woman called 911 said a large black man was breaking in to the house. Rames questioned the officer, asking, why are you doing this? To which they replied, a 911 caller reported a break-in. Large black man. That's a perfect description for Rames, but this large black man wouldn't break into his own home, would he? Allegedly, Rames and another black guy got the cops called on them for just being in their own neighborhood. Apparently, some neighbors thought they were breaking into houses, their houses. The confrontation only ended when one of the responding officers recognized Reigns, not as an award-winning actor, but because their sons play basketball together on rival teams. Can you imagine? Police then escorted Reigns to the source of the 911 call, his neighbor's home, to introduce him and explain the situation. Because think about it, the only explanation was that the caller didn't realize that Reigns was her neighbor. Or did she? That neighbor, it, it turns out, called police. When police realized the mix-up, they introduced uh, Rames to that neighbor. She denied making the call. I'm sorry, what? That sends chills up and down your spine when you think about it, because it could have ended up a lot worse than it did. My problem is, as I said to them, what if it was my son and he had, you know, a video game remote or something? and you thought it was a gun. The cops actually apologized. Apparently, they realized they'd made a huge mistake. It's a total eye-opener about racism and miscommunication and racial profiling that's still going on in some neighborhoods. You'd think nobody would be dumb enough to mess with a famous person from a fancy neighborhood, right? It's like, even if you're a big shot sitting in your pajamas in a home purchased with your hard-earned money, you're not immune to the drama that comes with the color of your skin. After the whole ordeal, the Santa Monica Police Department decided to try and make things right. They started this Meet Your Neighbors program, hoping to build some bridges and prevent more misunderstandings in the future. He actually came out and supported the Meet Your Neighbors program. He said it was important for everyone to get to know each other and stop being so suspicious of people who look different. Bing Rames isn't just a great actor who's simply making all this money. He's also a really good guy. 
He's always been involved in charity work, helping people who are less fortunate. And while filming a movie called The Saint of Fort Washington, I'm gonna teach you a lesson once and for all, Mrs. Jerry. Come on. Bing bumped into a homeless guy on the street. In a plot that sounds like it's straight out of a telenova, this homeless guy turned out to be his long lost brother. His brother had been estranged from the family after serving in Vietnam. Bing was so shocked and touched that he immediately started taking care of him, giving him food, clothes, and even a place to live. That experience really opened his eyes, and now the 65-year-old actor pours himself even more into giving back. Bing Rames has a net worth estimated at $16 million, and the experience of finding his long-lost brother while helping others is proof that we should all look out for each other, and Bing Rames definitely lives by that. From his breakout role in Pulp Fiction, Go back in there and chill them niggas out and wait for the wolf who should be coming direct. To his enduring presence in the Mission Impossible franchise. I blew an entire weekend on the bottom of the San Francisco Bay. Well, thanks to you, Clowns. Bing Rames has undeniably left his mark on Hollywood. His powerful performances and his unwavering commitment to humanitarian causes have solidified his status as a true legend. So the next time you're watching one of his films, take a moment to appreciate the incredible talent and the compassionate heart that make Bing Rames truly one of a kind.